Now on this episode of Real Housewives of Atlanta, it was Marlo versus Candy. So once again, Marlo finds herself in the middle of some drama. She is always bringing drama to the show. And guess what? That is why we watch the show for the drama that these ladies bring. So anyway, like I said, it was Marlo versus Candy because Candy jumped into the middle of the situation where Marlo was getting into it with Ralph and Drew. So Marlo wanted to know why is Ralph not adopting Josiah, even though he had said that he was going to adopt Josiah. How does Drew feel about this now that he has changed his mind? And so Candy jumped into the middle of that conversation where Marlo was having issues with Drew and her husband. And Candy was like, you are a fine one to talk because of the situation that she is going through with her nephews. So Candy doesn't like the fact that she had to tell her nephews to get out. So Marlo needed a break, a 30-day break apparently. So Marlo focused on Candy and she was like, you know, you are fine one to be talking because, you know, your mom degrades your husband. You know, nobody wants to be in a relationship with you because you put your mom above your husband. So this is what Marlo had to say. But my thought about this is, so what if she puts her mom before somebody? I'm not saying that she does because it really doesn't look like she does. It just looks like, you know, she has a relationship with her mom plus she has a relationship with her husband. But the thing about it is, you know, she bought her mom a home. But does that mean that she puts her mom before her husband? And even though her mom might say some derogatory things about her husband, you know, her mom was there before her husband. So is she just going to throw her mom out just because she has a husband? Or is she going to try to have a relationship with both the mom and the husband? This is not all that Marlo had to say that Candy puts her mom above her husband. She said that. Um, she lets her mom degrade Todd as well. She was indicating that Todd might not even like Candy like that because of the way that he used to talk about her before they was dating, apparently. According to Marlo, Todd had done called Candy a country bumpkin. Oh, but of course Todd denied that. And then Todd went in on Marlo and said that Marlo didn't have any friends. She didn't really have any friends on the show and that she bought her way onto the show. So really, Todd, she bought her way onto the show. So this is what Todd had to say. And the thing about it is, so she bought her way on the show. How many years ago was that? About 11 or 12 years ago. So she paid a fee, just like you pay a fee to a talent agency. And then she is there for 11 or 12 years. So it looks like it really paid off for her if she had to pay to get on the show. And really, you know... If you really want to talk about it, are these ladies really friends outside of being on the show? Would they really be friends? Would they really have come together if they were not making money for being on this show? Don't act like these people would be friends in real life if it wasn't for the show. Bravo put the cast members together. Bravo decides who gets a peach. So, and then you got to film with the ladies if you want to be on the show. You know, it's really about the money more than the friendships. So anyway, this is what Todd had to say. He said Marlo paid her way to get on the show. And then Marlo went off on Candy once again, talking about Candy. She is only known in Atlanta. Really, she was in a group that is international, a very popular group called Escape. And you are going to say that the girl is not worldwide, that the girl is only known in Atlanta. Is that the best you could come up with, Marlo? You was really stretching it at that time because candy you know they were escape now she is on a sitcom what chicago broadway i mean come on give the girl her props i am just saying so this is what went down all kind of drama that marlo was once again in between remember on the last episode it was she and kenya going at each other she was in the middle of that drama and now she is smack dab in the middle of more drama and she put herself right smack dab in the middle you know she was really interrogating ralph about why he was not going to adopt drew's son josiah you know but ralph was talking about he is putting out a book we saw that he is putting out a book about parenting uh co-parenting by him being a stepfather and you know drew was kind of upset because you know she don't even know what's in the book you know you're co-parenting 
you know, you're talking about her son, but she has no idea what is in this book. But she did get to meet your publisher. So that is good, you know. So hopefully your publisher is not like the assistant that you had that tried to, you know, give you a massage and whatnot. Because it seems like Ralph, he likes to work with the ladies. Anyway, Drew does not know exactly what is in this book. But, you know, she gets a little bit upset. So he's telling her that he wants her to write the foreword. So how is she going to write the forward to let people know what is in that book when she don't even know what's in the book? So, you know, she's like, she can't write no forward for no book that she don't even know the contents of. Come on now. And the publisher acted like this was not crazy. You know, that she didn't even know what's in the book. But yet, y'all want her to write the forward. So anyway, on this episode, they are there in Jamaica. And Sanya plans this trip to Jamaica, and this time she does a good job with the food. She does a good job with the rooms. So it seems like the people are going to have a good time. Of course, this was before all the drama with Marlo and the husbands. And so they had some nice rooms. They was having good food, and everyone was having a good time. They was riding to their hotel in the golf cart, and Kenya spots a good-looking guy. And I believe that he was a pool guy or something like that. And they had to turn that golf cart around. And Kenya had went and got that man's number and invited him to the dinner. And so he came to the dinner. And, of course, they had to interrogate this guy to find out how old he was. Because Kenya was there in Jamaica. And it seems like she was going to get her groove back. You know, like Stella got her groove back. But only Kenya was getting her groove back. And uh, this man is about, what, 15 years younger than Kenya, kind of find out, you know, he was reluctant to tell his age, but they got it out of him. He is 37 years old. And Kenya, you know, in the confessional, they were saying that she would not date a man that young. She said she would not. She did not say that. She said she dated him from 30 to 60. So, you know, he is at least 30. So he is right in that age group. So it seems like Kenya was going to get her groove back and the man was there at the dinner and then Marlo started arguing with people's husband and the man left and they said that Kenya ain't seen the man since. So this is what is going on. Uh, Marlo once again is bringing the drama and it was Marlo versus Candy and Candy said she is not only known in atlanta b she is known worldwide this is what she told marlo so we're gonna have to get this round to candy because candy girl is known worldwide so why are you trying to play her like that marlo just saying so anyway this is what went down with the ladies on real housewives of atlanta let me know what you thought of this episode make sure you leave a comment below like this video and subscribe to the youtube channel this is liz keeping up with the biz and i'm out